beginning's a good place to start. So we're starting with Design with X, which I think is Dean's first book. And we'll start with the very second poem in the very first book. Not now those little goodbye stories. Today my friend is having her heart fixed. A hole in the septum is mixing blood, the red and blue on the diagrams gray. When I last saw her, she was partially happy, knowing at last why she could only pick so many socks off the floor, and she seemed even more beautiful as the cup went to her lips, a small white cup. Around her, the room seemed pulsing, as if something significant had just been said and there was soon to be a soft-spoken reply. When I was little, I thought the body solid as a potato. Then, grade by grade, it filled with X's and O's, circulations and decussations, intricate as a Swiss toy from another century that could be broken by dust. By now, all my grade school teachers are dead and done with their lesson, but please, not now for all that. Not now for the little stories of our old neighbors who bend lower each morning for the morning paper that never explains those explosions in the night. She is young. We're all young. An intern I know sketched me the procedure, the good percentages and silver vice they use to spread the ribs. I can feel my own heart brought up into the air and light, a Saturday hero sprung from jail. <clears throat> Bars bent, a toothsome grin, and quick to the horses. By Tuesday, she'll have a canoe-shaped scar for her husband's finger to ride, a blue canoe setting off in the sunrise. Left behind, we await her return, her news of fish that fly, gems big as hats, flowers that eat meat. You kind of can't make that up, that that was the second poem in Dean's first book. Well, I, was, I saw Dean, last time I saw him was the last day of September of last year. And uh, he was having a tough time making it out of the car to go get a burrito. And he waited a long time for a transplant, and during that period, I was thinking about what kind of poem I might write him, because he was what's called 1A, so he was in the top category of people that are waiting. And the, the poem that I imagined was going to be, was going <clears> to, <throat> was going to be called something like, Dear Healthy Young Helmetless Harley Rider Who Voted for Bush Twice, hates gays, blacks, and Jews, please have three more drinks at the bar before you hit the road. <laughs> I mean, I know that sounds a little cruel, but this is, this is a little bit the reality, and it got me thinking about recycling, which we have to think about a lot anyway, and, uh, and recycling of, of, of garbage and, and, and art and, and body parts. And instead of that poem, I, I, kind of, I kind of stole something that I actually dreamed about uh, one night of, of driving to Texas with something for Dean and, uh, and wrote this poem instead that seemed not quite as cruel as the, uh, the wish that the, the Harley Rider have another drink. Um, it's called Golden Gate Recology. And uh, it used to be called Sunset Scavenger right. in San Francisco, but now everything has a, you know, kind of a hipper, I don't know, greener name, and it's called Golden Gate Recology. That's what it says on the trucks, and they, not only do they take your garbage, but they take your recycling. Uh, there's a, uh, a bridge down in Austin where famously gazillions of bats live. Hear about that. And this was written in Dean's, totally an homage to Dean and his one of his like mega stanzas 
and uh, as close as I could get to writing a Dean poem. Beep, beep, beeping, backing up garbage, slash recycling truck, spoiling the morning's wan stillness, burying the pink bones of domesticated turkeys, cathode gray tubes now unwatchably fat, the faulty words of husbands never understanding their wives, and naturally, in the special groaning compartment, the lies of wives chronically misunderstood. Also, shredded and unshredded paper, naked smoothie containers, drained Zin bottles no longer hinting at jammy structured moonlight. Might there be a heart in there? Not needed anymore. First laid in the blue bin at the curb last night. Now winched and loaded by the chain-smoking, ash-faced civil servant in the recology jumpsuit, gunning his hydraulics to shake out the last of the sticky, upside-down contents into his whining, wheeled cave. He's thinking about Tiffany at Centerfolds last night. Yum. Plus the frightening cost of his daughter's braces. Say I commandeer his vehicle, haul ass to Texas like a Lamborghini in heat, bleeding pump packed in ice, laying in a Playmate cooler as in yesteryear, further insulated by a dense forest floor of pine needles, campers, spoiled milk, torn hose, and torn retirement account statements. At the last bridge, bats who love the bridge turn aircraft carrier escort, fly out of the river's dark mouth, and point their V in the direction of the hospital. OK, buddy, you try transporting a metaphor from San Francisco to Austin. No job for sissies, Kerouac, or congressmen packing constitutions. Here, pal, here's your heart. The doctors are scrubbing at the line of scrimmage, surveying the defense, stunts, blitz packages, red dogs, threats from the edge. Your shiny new wife's got the new wife smell, but will last forever and forever and forever. <laughs>